Today we'll be talking about 3D resin printers. Uh, 3D printers are really incredible technology. I just somehow found out about them about a month ago and slammed that add to cart button. And being obsessed with resin as I am, I needed to get my hands on one of these things. And I have always wanted a 3D printer. I just was waiting until the technology got better because I was not like really looking for the build lines and that was something that was really annoying me so I'm glad I waited. I bought this one on sale for $100 and to be honest I thought I was gonna get scammed. I thought nothing was gonna show up. This is either the future or I really shouldn't be on the internet. First let's go over some basic safety rules with these things. Uh, as you know, UV resin is not the greatest material to get on your skin or inhale. So always use gloves, wear a respirator, um, it's nasty stuff, but you know that. Anyways, I was super excited to get my hands on one of these. And this is the Anycubic Photon Zero and the Anycubic Wash and Cure Station. The print quality is awesome and it's really great technology. Now, if you don't know how resin printers work, I can explain. With these, I think the reason that they can be so cheap is because there's very few moving parts. Basically, this just goes up and down into this vat of resin. And below this vat of resin is an LCD screen. The LCD screen projects images blocking off the UV light where you don't want the resin to be exposed on the build plate. So it will attach itself ideally to the build plate and detach itself from the bottom. And it builds up layers like that one by one until you get your finished piece. So that's how the 3D printer works. It's pretty much ingenious. The user experience of setting this up was terrible. Um, the USB it came with actually wasn't formatted to work with the machine. So I was very frustrated when I first set it up because I couldn't run the test print uh, that was on the USB because it wasn't formatted correctly. Now, after going on some Reddit posts, I figured out what the issue was and was able to resolve it myself. So I did have a few issues with uh, my first couple of prints. So let's talk about some of the things that I did wrong when I first set up my resin printer and used it. This was my first successful print and as you can see it is solid resin inside. Um, this print file I just picked up from Etsy. It's a, it's a dumpster <laughs> and I wanted to make little ornaments for my friends and family for Christmas. So uh, I just started printing these right off the bat. And I was like, well, you know, I should hollow this out. And you can actually hollow it out in the program that Anycubic gives to you. This is my second print. And I was like, well, you know, I hollowed it out. I punched holes in my pieces and I gave it a little support structure inside. Of course, there aren't any holes in the walls of the support structure. So the liquid isn't going to drain out. I didn't think of that. Um, so the resin remained inside the places where it couldn't drain out and this is what I was left with. So that was a interesting learning curve. And this is another fail. This is because my building plate wasn't tightened to the arm that goes up and down. So it was just kind of laying, it wasn't pulling off the resin all the way. and kind of didn't build up the layers properly so uh, I did tighten it to the arm and finally I was able to get a successful print. Here we have two holes so the resin could drain out of the inside of it and I did add little supports inside so as it prints it has something to build on and stick to and yeah and then I added a coat of 
UV resin to make it all, all glossy and shiny and I painted it with enamel paints and yeah I really love the way it came out so that was the way to go with resin printing it's not as easy as you think you got to think about how gravity plays in how it attaches to the build plate uh, so do your research before really getting into it and knowing exactly what you're doing. After your resin piece is printed, what you have to do is you have to wash and cure it. So washing, you usually do rubbing alcohol. First I was doing that with just like a to-go container and just like shaking it around and letting it dry. Um, so I'm a fan of automatons and filling my house with useful little robots that can do the little tasks that I'm too ADHD to even remember. This is a wash and cure station. Um, this was actually more expensive than that. Uh, I just loved this whole situation. Basically, this is a removable cover because you don't want to be blinded by the UV lights. It has a removable platform here, a mirror here so it can reflect the light back up into your piece, and you just set your vat of alcohol here. It comes with this container when, uh, and with a sealable lid, and change it to wash, pick your setting, boom. It makes a cute startup noise, and it will swirl the alcohol around your piece so you get a really clean piece with no uncured resin on it because that's gross nasty so after you've done that you put your resin away i would recommend keeping it away from light because i will show you what light does to alcohol with uncured resin in it now this is what i wanted it to do if you can see this, this is clean alcohol on top of resin that has dropped to the bottom. So what I do is I put my alcohol in the window and let the uncured resin cure to itself and that'll all drop to the bottom, leaving you with fresh, usable alcohol. Hopefully this isn't creating some toxic substance, <laughs> but I keep everything covered and wear a mask when I'm dealing with it. So I just pour that back into the clean alcohol once all of that goop is solidified. Oh, I forgot to mention this basket goes into that vat. There's a cat hair. Also don't print cat hair into your pieces because I did that. So keep cat hair away. I don't keep cats in here, but cat hair will come in, in here. It will travel through my clothes in whatever way it can, and it will get into my resin pieces. Okay, so for the cure, you have this little platform. Put your pieces on there. Put your cover on there, because it won't start, because it has a sensor back here. Telling the machine that you are safe from the, the UV rays, and you're gonna set your time and if you do not remember to put it to cure, Hello, darkness, my old friend. You'll yeet your projects to the sides. That's not what you want. But switch it to cure, set your time limit, and there you go. Your pieces will rotate and get a super even cure. Love it. Now, as for the surface quality, um, it's not something I would sell without finishing the piece. Um, and uh, for making blanks for molds, you do have to be careful because this resin will sometimes react with the silicone and the silicone won't cure around the piece. So you have to really seal these up with some sort of varnish something. <clears throat> But I've also been advertised uh, 
UV resin that doesn't interact with the silicone. You have a few options there. The finicky tinkeriness of this reminds me of when I first started vaping. Vaping is how I quit smoking. And this was years and years ago when the technology was super new and basically we were kind of inventing our own mods and it, it really was probably frustrating to people that didn't have the patience to do that and this is kind of what I equate that to is that technology is still kind of new and finicky and like if this isn't fit right it won't stick to it and you have to like really do your research. So be wary of getting into it. It can be a little technical with the files and creating uh, files and stuff like that. It's definitely no, no Cricut. Cricut has really great user experience and design developed in the way of being accessible to everyone. While with this, it can be a little clunky, although amazing amazing stuff. Uh, the rough edges still need to be smoothed out a little. Do your research before you get a machine. See if that's something that uh, you can you can commit to uh, with the software, the files, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, if you're all into that, go for it. The only thing that I regret is splurging a little bit more on this guy and getting a bigger build plate area. I think that would be my next upgrade. And I can't wait to see where this technology goes. It's really cool. And you will be seeing some interesting creations of mine because I've been making my blanks with polymer clay and no more. Uh, opens up a lot of doors for me and I'm sure it will for you as well. And yeah, um, hope this was helpful. It would really help me if you were to drop a like Go ahead and subscribe. I make videos as, as often as I can about resin and I hopefully want to expand into crafting, stuff like that. Looking forward to hanging out in the next video and happy creating.